guys. Today I want to uh, discuss some of the main differences between a full frame camera and a prop sensor camera for astrophotography and uh, sort of like the pros and cons of both. What I have here is a, a Canon 60D and a Canon 6D. And this is pretty much a entry level uh, full frame camera. And this one is your crop sensor camera. And if I take the uh, body caps off, you can see obvious differences there in the size of the, the mirror. And it's also the size of the sensor that's involved. So anyway, most people have the crop sensor camera because it's, uh, it's cheaper in price. Um, and generally, uh, as far as advantages, your crop sensor camera is going to be lighter, and that's important because uh, you want to put as less weight as possible on your mount and your tripod to make it more stable. Um, you're going to need a more expensive setup to hold more weight, and this on the back of your telescope is this is roughly two pounds. This is actually pretty heavy for a uh, crop sensor camera. The, the 60D is. Um, Something like a thousand D, what they call a XS, is uh, I think under a pound and a half, and not too bad. It's I don't remember exactly, but it's really light and it's a compact DSLR. It's maybe about this big, as opposed to this. It's almost well, it's pretty much the same size as a full frame camera. But anyway, um, you're probably familiar with the crop factor. Um, to explain that with Canon, you're looking at 1.6 times. So for example, uh, on a full frame camera, this 50 millimeter lens would be 50 millimeter. But on the crop sensor camera, it's gonna be 80. So it's 1.6 times the focal length. Um, that's an advantage and a disadvantage. Um, when I, I say that, I mean, if you're trying to take shots of the moon or something like that with uh, camera only, uh, it's nice to have that extra boost in uh, focal length because of the crop sensor. But for wide field shots, Milky Way shots and that sort of thing, uh, it's really difficult to find a budget lens for crop sensor that's uh, in the 14 millimeter range because you have to go way below that. Um, the uh, Rokinon F2.8 is about the best option you got. That's uh, around a $300 price mark. But um, like this 50 millimeter uh, a shot of the sky is, is pretty wide on a, uh, a full frame camera. It's amazingly wide. Um, you could get, uh, if you're in full frame, something like one of these older 24 millimeters, F2.8 pretty good for low light. Um, they've got a newer version of this that's got IS and all that on it. I think that's because of all the vlogging that's going on and stuff. Um, I just bought the older one. It's, it's pretty sharp and not a whole lot of distortion and that sort of thing. But so yeah, um, big disadvantage for the full frame is the price of the lenses. Generally the EF line is more expensive than the EFS um, with your crop sensor camera you can use EF and EFS lenses. Uh, but back to the uh, the whole uh, astrophotography part of it through using Prime through a telescope, uh, you notice like uh, the 60D has a reciprocating screen. That's really useful because your, your telescope may be in a position like this often pointed almost directly overhead and you can rotate this screen to uh, accommodate yourself while having to you know crank your neck or whatnot um <clears throat> with your full frames I, I don't think there are any in the canon line that have the reciprocating screen like that uh, i may be wrong but i know the 5ds don't and the upper end ones like that uh, but yeah, generally a whole lot heavier, bulkier camera. Um, but it's a whole lot easier to get 
wide field with a full frame. So another major factor is your draw tube size. The standard being 1.25 inch. Um, if you have a full frame camera for prime, uh, the sensor is going to be clipped from the 1.25 inch barrels. You're going to have heavy vignetting in the corners. Um, to explain that, uh, this Tokina lens I have here, this 12 to 24, uh, vignettes up to 18 because this is in fact not an EF lens and uh, the corners get cut off. Uh, I ran this 60D with a two inch setup as opposed to a 1.25 on my telescope and it cut the vignetting down a lot but it's an expensive conversion to uh, switch all your gear over and uh, unlike what most people would think uh, you hear guys talking about your uh, two inch eyepieces for uh, telescopes being so much better than the uh, 1.25s you're really not gaining a whole lot there uh, I've, I've used both um, so if you've got a big collection of eyepieces and you've got a standard 1.25 inch draw tube focuser or whatnot uh, you're uh it's going to cost you a lot of money to switch to two inch. You're going to have to switch to two inch for your full frame line for prime, whereas you don't have to with the uh, crop sensor. But in any event, if you do switch to two inch, it cuts the vignetting down. I've tested that and it, it does have an impact on it. So, uh, that's pretty much, uh, the main factors that, that uh, I can give you pros and cons. Uh, oh, and uh, especially uh, the full frame camera with the bigger sensor is gonna gain light faster than a crop sensor will. Um, you're not gonna have to expose for quite as long. So that's a huge plus here, especially for uh, your uh, wide field. Milky Way shots and that sort of thing. Um, bigger sensor and the, that you find in the uh, full frames like the 5D Mark III's and that sort of thing. Um, they're generally a uh, better signal to noise ratio also. So the sensors in them are actually a whole lot better. And that's a huge, huge plus uh, for both your prime and your, your wide field. So something to consider there um, you take the commonly known rule of 500 which is you divide the focal length you divide 500 by the focal length of your lens and uh, you generally get the uh, amount of time you can expose with a, a particular focal length lens if you use the 500 rule for crop just say 300 divided by the focal length of the lens uh, and you'll notice that like 24 millimeters on this camera, 24 millimeters on this camera, you'll get a lot more exposure time on a full frame. Um, just as a, a general rule, I find that that number to be a little off myself. Um, the rule of 500, I'd, I'd put it more like 400 because <laughs> uh, like the 50 millimeter uh, lens that I have in front of me, um, you should be able to get 10 seconds, but that's not the case. Uh, it's more like eight. Uh, it's always a little bit less than, that's just a general guideline. I almost left this part <clears throat> out of the video, but another thing to consider if uh, you're doing wide field especially is a lot of the really popular clip-in filters um, don't work with the uh, EFS lenses and the reason for that is that the, the lens body itself actually enters into the, uh, the body of the camera too deep to be used in combination with a uh, a popular clip-in filter like your uh, 
uh, types. I think uh, Astronomics makes probably the most popular ones. Uh, but they only work with EF line lenses, not the EFS. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, they tell you that on, on the website. There's manufacturers that make these uh, hydrogen alpha filters and that sort of thing. But if you're planning on doing uh, Milky Way shots and you want to use a clip-in filter, it's important to, to know that you need the EF line if you're using the uh, Canon cameras. Another thing is, uh, I mentioned the crop factor. Uh, when you shoot prime and you shoot your, your camera through your telescope, your telescope becomes the camera lens and the crop factor is actually uh, influences that also. Um, for example, if, you, if you're trying to keep a really wide or fast telescope like an F5 uh, or say like 500 millimeter, that sort of thing, the minute you put an ASPC or crop sensor camera on that, you have uh, increased the, the focal length of the uh, telescope itself because of the crop factor. So you're no longer operating a fast uh, F5 instrument. So a little more demanding on your uh, on your system, uh, just because you might have like say a, a good uh, Edmund Scientific fast uh, refractor. Uh, with that crop sensor camera, you're going to multiply that by 1.6, and that's a huge difference. Um, it might be enough to put you up around F9 and uh, <clears throat> a lot more demanding. Uh, it's also generally why, even with the best telescope, you need a uh, auto guider system uh, because uh, it, it's really demanding. Anything above F5 is really demanding on uh, on tracking without getting trailing and that sort of thing. So something else to consider. Just thought I'd throw that in there and. Uh, Sorry about the shortage of videos lately. I've been really busy. I got a lot of things going on, but uh, I got some new content coming out and uh, I'll get back uh, regular. Hope you guys uh, found this information helpful. And if you got anything to add, please do it in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and I uh, hope you have plenty of clear skies.